Folks, the crossover segment is on fire, and we brought two excellent examples of them. I brought the 2018 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. And I have the 2018 Jeep Compass Limited. And you know, Nathan, these might be two of the most off-road worthy crossovers on the market. So let's just take them up Goldmine Hill. And that's coming up next. What you see here is a 152 horsepower, 1.5 liter direct injected turbocharged engine that puts out 184 pound feet of torque. That's a good torque number, but you have to get up to 3000 RPM to really get that torque. And it's a continuously variable transmission, a CVT, so you have to rev it anyway. And it's hooked up to a proper all wheel drive system that allocates good torque to the back when necessary. I guess I'm gonna leave it in snow mode. There's gravel mode as well. So you have auto, snow, and gravel. The all-wheel drive system in this vehicle is pretty much all electronic. Uh, there's an active yaw control that works off of the anti-lock braking system. When necessary, up to 60% of the power can be sent to the rear wheels. So far, so good. Yeah, easy peasy, huh? yeah, this vehicle, now there are a couple little icy spots and slushy spots, uh, but for the most part, it's not having a hard time. I did feel a little bit of power go to the rear, which is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Under the hood of this Jeep Compass is the 2.4 liter naturally aspirated Tiger Shark engine. Power is sent to all four wheels through a nine speed automatic transmission. All right guys, so we're here in the Compass. I'm going to put it in four wheel drive lock. And then I'm gonna select the mud driving mode because, well, there's a lot of mud in front of me right now. So um, that's about all I can do as far as all the drive stuff goes, so let's just give it a shot. Nice and easy. Yeah, no problem so far. Yeah, you know, it feels pretty good. I mean, Jeep obviously has baked in a good amount of their own all-wheel drive prowess into this vehicle and you can tell it's not really having much of an issue with stage one here. Alright, and then we'll stop. Initially I thought this was going to be kind of a nightmare with how muddy it is down at the bottom, but actually once you get up here towards the top, things start to dry out a little more and actually the next obstacle looks relatively clear. It does, but because both of these vehicles are all-wheel drive and not exactly four-wheel drive, a little bit of momentum is going to be needed to get around the corner. Definitely. Alright, give it a shot. Alright, All right, here we go guys. So I'm adding a little bit of acceleration to try to get around. <laughs> Voila. Once again, no real issues, huh? No major issues, but what you've got to remember that with these types of all-wheel drive systems in car-based crossovers, you need a little bit of momentum. A lot more than I think a lot of people are comfortable with because when you have a proper 4x4, you don't want too much momentum. You want to go as slow as you possibly can. These vehicles are brand new from the ground up. Both of these vehicles get a lot of components from their brethren. A lot of components that go into the Mitsubishi came from the Outlander clan, and of course, with the Compass, you get a lot of stuff from the Renegade and Cherokee. Let's uh, give it a go. Oh yeah, sending power wisely. Oh, easy, not a problem. I don't know if I even lifted a wheel there. Yeah, I don't think I did. Wow, that was a non-issue for this Jeep. 
check it out guys, they have very similar tires. These are Continentals and these are Bridgestones. They're both the same sizes, both of them are on 18 inch wheels and they're both mud and snow. Let's see if the rear end is going to kick in any more power. It worked! I am really impressed. Did not expect that to work at all. <laughs> well done, little guy. Come on, Jake. Yeah, baby! Hey, there we go. I don't even think I rubbed. Excellent. We started this video by pointing out that these may be two of the most off-road worthy crossovers available today. Both the Jeep and Mitsubishi managed to climb up all three obstacles with little hesitation, despite street biased tires and Nathan and Mike's usual antics. The Jeep of course coped slightly better with the challenging conditions of Goldmine Hill, but Mitsubishi's history of rallying and all-wheel drive vehicles have allowed them to equip the Eclipse Cross with impressive capability off-road. The Mitsubishi offers a slight advantage in terms of value, providing a comparable equipment package at a lower price than the Jeep. Nearly $3,000 as tested. Both these vehicles did really good on Goldmine Hill. Both these vehicles drive great on the road, and both of these vehicles are great Colorado cars. You'll win either way with these vehicles because I think you agree with me, really, really well put together cars. They're, they're both excellent vehicles, you can't go wrong, and there's a reason that this segment is red hot right now. For the Fast Lane Cars is Nathan. And Mike. We'll see you next time. Thanks.